First of all, obviously, one nil at half time, away from home. What was the team talk? It must have been pretty positive then. Uh, I couldn't tell you what was said, <laughs> other than the fact that there are a few choice words from uh, from Davy and Leach, actually. Uh, normally you heard from one or the other at half time, unless it was really bad, and I think uh, they even let Danny have a say in the kit man at half time. <laughs> <laughs> 59 minutes gone, it was four goals in a dreadful nine minutes, we were 5 0 down. What was going through your mind? Do you think we were out? Well, to be honest, um, I, I really wasn't fit to play. I mean, I was about 50 50 at best, and I remember I had a problem with my knee, I had a lot of fluid on my knee, couldn't really um, get around the pitch particularly well, as you could probably see. So um, I remember Leash and David asked me if I would just give it a bash and see, and I I can't believe they didn't drag me off. I think it was, uh, you know, it was probably uh, any any one of eleven that they could have taken off. But uh, after about an hour, you didn't pass the lead fitness test for right, right? But it was a great goal in that game. And uh, in your mind, does it top the one up and the two one of the Rangers game? Yeah! We all love it. We all love it. That's a good goal. Does that top it in your mind? <laughs> I never Don't scored flu in my whole career. Um, I mean, to be honest, I, I remember coming off at the end thinking we got out of jail, we lost 5-2 and that was as good as it could have been for us because we got absolutely battered. Um, and to be honest, uh, you know, they were a very good side. I, I went away from that game thinking at least I got the best goal of the night, but when I saw their goals, actually they got a couple of really good team goals. They were a very good side. We were totally outclassed um, and it was, to be honest, it was a shame because the, the shape of our team had changed a lot from the, the team that finished third and qualified for Europe. And I think if we had the same team um, that finished third, the same boys, the same uh, team ethic, I think that's the type of team that we could have given a run for their money, but we we were a different team then. We, we were on the way down, unfortunately. Obviously, 5-2 five, five, full time. Two away goals, was that more than a lifeline for you? Um, no, to be honest, I, mean, I think we knew that uh, they were a very good attacking side um, and you have to be realistic when you go into um, a European venture. We didn't have that experience, we didn't have, have that knowledge or expertise, uh, we didn't have that know-how about how possession is so important. Uh, and it was, a, it was a valuable lesson for us and um, obviously as we'll see in a minute with the second leg, I think we we showed that we could be a force going forward, but we were still quite weak defensively. Obviously, you've scored a lot of good goals. Uh, that was one, the Rangers one was another one. What is so your most proudest goal? Um, in a Livy jersey, I think the, um, the goal against Rangers oh, was, wow. was an important goal. Um, you know, we obviously we were scrapping to try and get ourselves into third place, and uh, I remember that it was you know it was late on in the game and. And let's be honest, you, you don't get a chance to turn over the old firm very often, so when you do, you've got to celebrate it. It was, uh, regardless of whether it was a tap in or, or a decent finish, it was a very important goal and it, it pretty much put us in the driver's seat for third place. You realise if Jimmy Hill was complicated in the grass game, that would have been a topo. <laughs> Obviously, there's been a lot of ex pros that went down the manager's line. Why have you not done it? Sky offering too much money? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I, uh, as Bingy will tell you, you know, we, a lot of us uh, went down the route of doing our coaching badges, which I think is a, it, it's probably a safety valve for footballers in that you, you play your whole career. The one thing that you know and, and you're comfortable with is, is talking about football, playing football, coaching, that type of thing. But um, I, I guess. I probably read the script and that you know the, the, the game has changed and that there's such a short-term attitude towards football nowadays where, um, and don't take this personally, but I'm not talking about fans, I'm just talking about fans in general, they have such a short-term attitude and it's a case of, you know, you lose a couple of games, get him out of his crap, doesn't know what he's doing, sack him, you know, and um, I, I, you know, from my, my family's perspective, my, my missus and my kids, I, I thought, you know, I could go out and try and be a manager and, and probably like most guys fail and then and then do what? You know, I, I think um, I could indulge it for my own selfish reasons, but uh, we all like to think we could be a good manager. Um, but if you don't succeed in your first job, the chances are you'll never get another chance. And um, I think I made the right decision not to bother. Obviously, it's not just Sky you're involved with. What else are you involved with? You're still in the game, aren't you? Yeah, my full-time role is with the Players' Union, with the PFA. So. Um, 
know, we, we've had plenty on in the last few years since since I've been involved. The last three years, we've had Dundee going into administration, Hearts players not getting paid, and Rangers basically plummeting into the oblivion. So those are just the high-profile ones. But I was speaking to someone earlier on saying that uh, even for the high-profile cases that you see, there are hundreds that go behind the scenes. And I, I mean, some of the things that I have to deal with on a on a weekly basis would make your eyes water. Um, I'm afraid to say that clubs are still not taking their responsibilities to look after players properly and they, you know, there's a lot of penny pinching going on. Players are treated very poorly um, and uh, I still don't think that the, the general public are aware of just, uh, you know, how little money there is in the game compared to what it used to be like. Um, it's, you know, it's a very tough time in Scottish football at the moment. To follow up and up to the, the floor in case there's anything I've missed. I know you do like a pun. You got the tips with the Ryder Cup tomorrow. Oh, dear. Um, well, I, I would basically look at the guys who have been playing crap and back. The, the opponent is fairly straightforward, but Lee Westwood's been struggling, so everybody plays against back the other guy. Martin Kleinway is the same, and all these guys. Um, Bingy has already said that he's recorded it, and he doesn't want to know who's, what's going on. So for anyone who's going to talk about the Ryder Cup, if Bingy's in your earshot, could you just move away so that he can actually enjoy his life? Um, because uh, I think it's probably all going to end in tears, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Anyone my, want to ask you any questions? My question is a bit right the cup, so... <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, oh, he was a former club captain, he was a living legend. There is one question at the back there, just give me a second. Hey, right. Stop on the legend! The overhead kick that you scored against Rangers, you said you did it all the time, and Rob will say you practiced it about ten times in training and you still never done it. But an excellent goal, I can't argue with that. <laughs> you were taking the pitch, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously there wasn't the actually a question on that. <laughs> <laughs> I think you know it as well, sure. As I was saying, ladies and gentlemen, he was former club captain. He will always be a living legend, ladies and gentlemen. The gentleman that is Mr. Stuart Lennon. Thank you.